You can now get a 30-day trial to experience The Athletic for free. Visit the link in the description below to try it now. Hello and welcome to Transfer Rumours Analyzed with Tifo Football. I'm Joe Devine and I'm now joined by JJ Bull. There he is there. Today, we'll be talking about a few uh, potential transfers that we've read about in the newspapers and online. Now, to clarify, uh, we don't know whether these are going to happen or not, and we're not here to tell you whether they are going to happen or not. We're here to tell you what it might look like if they did happen. And uh, today, we've got a lovely list, starting with uh, the rumour that Joe Hart might be about to move to Celtic, JJ. Now, I thought this would be interesting. We could talk about Joe Hart and his career, but we could also talk about Celtic, because they got some problems. Celtic do have problems. They mm. are now firmly behind Rangers in the Scottish Premiership. Uh, it hasn't even started yet. No, last season they should have had ten in a row. And I mean, Rangers are really good, but Celtic have kind of fallen apart a little bit. And they are they need they're in need of a total rebuild, yeah, a full squad rebuild, and they're not doing it very well. Uh, now they've been papped out of the Champions League already by Michelin, so over two legs they are out of that now. So Europa League's possible, Europa Conference is possible. One of the things that they need to sort out is their goalkeeper. So at the moment they've got uh, Vasilis Barkas and Scott Bain are their two options as goalkeepers. Neither are particularly good mm. and both of them are susceptible to mistakes. So the rumours with Joe Hart, basically Celtic get linked with people who they've already had or to seem like, basically if it seems like something that was legit about five to ten years ago, yeah. that's kind of where they're at with the transfer policy at the moment it seems to be. So Joe Hart, remember he used to be good in like 2006. Yes, he did used to be good. So why not? Um, one of the things, Joe, I mean, Joe Hart's obviously a very capable goalkeeper. One of the weird things if you look at saves that he has made, he's not played an awful lot in the last while, he's been like the substitute at Burnley, yeah. and um, where else did he go? He went somewhere else. Well, he's back up at Tottenham right now. He's at Tottenham, that's the one, he's the third choice. Uh, he doesn't, he, so he, his save percentage is much lower, weirdly, to his left side, so if you shoot to the right of the goal and mm. low, um, you've got a good chance of scoring against him. Mm. He doesn't save as many as he should do in that part of the the goal hole. This is weird though, because I used to be a goalkeeper, and I'm left-handed, mm -hmm. but I remember being much more confident diving onto my right. Yeah. I don't know why it is that this is maybe a statistical anomaly, but yeah. it is something that is enough. Like There's a piece that uh, I remember from The Telegraph back in 2017 mm. where Alistair Tweedale noted it. And since then, it's something that I've repeatedly seen when you play against them and teams will target that side, the right side of the goal. So you just shoot to the right? Genuinely, yeah, to the bottom corner. Right. And you might get goals out of him. But Hart is thought of as well. I mean, he's been a leader in various dressing rooms. He is a strong character. He has a lot of experience. They need that, well, yeah, experience and characters. I mean, the, the, the back four that played against Michelin is Anthony Ralston, who's a young right back, technically not great. Uh, Greg Taylor, solid reserve left back, I'd say, nowhere near good enough for what Celtic have. So straight away, for the way the manager, uh, Ange Postogolou, I might have said his name very wrong there. Mm -hmm. but the new manager wants to be very intense, lots of pressing, uh, verticality, and he wants to have his fullbacks move inside to help with the midfield. So it means that Turnbull and McGregor can get higher up the pitch to help out with the uh, wide forwards or wingers and the striker. So it becomes like a 2-3, you know, 2-3-2-3, two, three, two, three, like mm -hmm. that kind of thing. Yeah. Ralston and Taylor are not the boys for that, so they need two fullbacks straight away. The guys they have in reserve are nowhere near it, so that's two positions that I mean, we don't even see in the rumours that they've got anyone coming in to replace them there. Yeah. Stephen Welsh has really come on quickly, he's a very young centre-back, I think he'll be okay. But they've lost Christopher Ayer, he's gone to Brentford, and Ayer uh, is not only a very competent centre-back, but he also gives them a lot in possession. He would often carry the ball into midfield to help form overloads and because Celtic are one of the best teams in the Premiership, Celtic have the majority of possession but they have against, you know, in Champions League games or Europa League games, yeah. they're not like that, they get a smaller share so they need a better defender but in the Premiership they want someone who's comfortable on the ball, they want a ball playing defender. So again, there's no real rumours linking them to anyone there either. Uh, this is Dane Murray who's 18, did okay against Michelin in Champions League. He shouldn't be playing this back four, this is one of the worst back fours that Celtic have named in the last five, ten years. Right. Not to say they're all bad, but... Midfielders, so Scott Brown's gone to Aberdeen. That was their captain for years, their talisman, and he is now gone, so they're missing that kind of insane drive and winning mentality. He is a strange character, Scott Brown. Uh, so they're now lacking all that experience as well. David Turnbull's a great player. But then they brought in... So this is the th thing they've got now. Watson Edward, we talked about him possibly linked to Brighton. That 
probably isn't a thing now, it looks mm -hmm. like. Uh, no one's really come in for Edward that we know of. His contract runs out at the end of the season, so what should be a maybe 30 to 40 million pound transfer out is very quickly becoming a 20 to 15 to 10. Yeah. So they need the money from this because they don't have the money that they used to have because they're not qualifying for Champions League that they used to. Yeah. Ryan Christie's linked with the move away. His contract runs out in January. He can play as a second striker. You can play off the right or the left. I think you'll find a few clubs will come in for him, but it's more than likely going to be, I would say, mid to lower table Premier League teams if they were. I mean, so what we're saying then basically is that not only have uh, they not qualified for the Champions League this year, but it's possible that within the space of the next 12 months they'll lose a couple of their important players on a free and not have the money to replace them because of yeah. those two previous things. Yeah, and then there's... No good. I mean, I don't think Joe Hart is the solution. <laughs> okay, next one is Josh Doig to Leeds. Uh, now, JJ, we know that uh, Josh Doig is from Hibs, uh, but the club have apparently said, he'll cost you five mil, pal. Yeah. Who is jo Josh Doig? Well, let me tell you who Josh Doig is once I've made him here. Here he goes. Josh Doig is a young, I think he's 19 years old. Really? He won Scottish Young Player of the Year last season in the Premiership. He's great. He came on, he started the season really well, had a bit of a dip, and came really strong for Jack Ross's team. That's right. the manager of him. Sure. Um, Where does he play? He's a left back. Oh. So he's a very attacking left back. He's really good in the final third. Um, I'm sure he'll improve defensively in 1v1s and just doing other things that left backs do. Didn't but, they just buy Firpo? Yeah, Leeds has bought Junior Firpo from Barcelona. He's a left back, left wing back. Pretty much exactly the same position oh. as Doig. But you want um, Maybe competition. Maybe Doig's one for the future anyway, a player to have around. Yeah, for sure. And also you want competition for places. You want to have like two, you want to have two of every position really. And the amount of running that the fullbacks do for Leeds, you need to have someone who can yeah. come in. I mean, you can give Fir uh, Firpo a rest in the cups or something like that. This guy's going to get a muscle injury. Yeah, that sort of thing. Doig's, uh, under the right coach, I think Doig could be a really, like a really good high-level really? left-back. Yeah. Like Andy Robertson level? I mean, I don't, I don't know, because I don't know. I mean, he, he's very good, Andy Robertson. Sure. But, I mean, the players that come out of Scottish football that play that position, I mean, Aaron Hickey's at Bologna just now. He was very good with Hearts, and he's a decent left-back. I see Josh Doig is on a level with him. I think Kieran Tierney was always a couple of steps above, because Tierney's the natural leader, and yeah. he was always that level. And Robertson didn't really excel till he went. It was, he was really good at Dundee United, and you can see he was top level at United. Doig's younger, and yeah. uh, I think it's a bit of development. His manager's a really talented coach, so I think you'd see you'll see development with him. So if not yeah. now, he'll be at a bigger team in the future. But, but I mean, five million is a not dream a lot for a nineteen-year-old. If it is five million for Leeds to play under Marcelo Bielsa while he's still at Leeds, it would be amazing. But then it depends if he plays. He might be better <laughs> off with another season of first-team football, or at least trains. Hmm? At least trains under Bielsa. I mean. Oh yeah, and yeah. <coughs> well, you think Bielsa would? I mean, the players that have improved under Bielsa, like Calvin Phillips, is like a different, yeah, human. Sure. Like, he, like he's he's turned into a player. I mean, Jack Harrison's obviously a Man City loanee, but he's been phenomenal under Bielsa. Bamford's turned into a different player. Uh, Luke Ayling, like all these guys have become really decent players. Is Jack and, Harrison, a Man City loanee. Yeah. I did not know that. Yeah, no, he's. I really like Jack Harrison a lot. Well, yeah. he's there for another year. Oh, he's permanent now. A transfer fee of eleven million. As of this, as of this window. Yeah, lovely. That's a good move. Uh, okay, yeah. yeah, they're coming together. Leeds with a decent team. Doig, my point was going to be that uh, Doig should cost more than five million because he's sure. su such a high ceiling. Like, if that was a young English player in the Premier League, you'd be talking about fifteen, twenty easily. Well, I was going to say, is this a bit of a thing with the Scottish league? It seems yes. like lots of excellent players. I mean, we were talking the other day about how much Van Dijk cost when he moved to Southampton. You know, like it seems. Rather than, as you say, if they're English players, you add 15 million. If, it seems if they play in Scotland, you minus 15 million. Oh, no, exactly. And uh, on The Athletic, of course, which you can subscribe to, we're going to... Uh, Theathletic.com forward slash TFO IRL. That's the one. Mm. Uh, there's a very interesting interview with Graham Matthew, who's the sporting director at Hibs. Right. And he talks about this exact problem, how come like Ivan Tony was worth 20 million when he's playing in League One or something like that. Yeah. When in the champion, I mean, in the Premiership, you've got Kevin Nisbet, who's played for Hibs and scored a heap of goals last season in the Premiership. They finished third. Sure enough, it's not one of the highest rated leagues in Europe, certainly, but uh, good players come out of there. And you, you can pretty much tell the standard of a player. I mean, they'll be tested at a higher level if they go to, I mean, the Premier League's a much higher level, it is. Yeah. But I wouldn't say it's that, I mean, I'll be ridiculed by everyone for saying it's not that much of a difference to the, ch the Championship, really. Championship's a bit of yo-yo. It's kind of all isn't, action, Isn't the physical. thing with, uh, with the SPL that, like, the top bit of it isn't that much different to the Championship, maybe. Championship, maybe. League One, yo-yo, but, like, 
some of it is quite different. I mean, John McGinn went to Villa when they were in the Championship for something ridiculous like three million or three and a half million. Sure. And now he's worth 40, 50 easily. He yeah. was already, he's not, he's not improved that much since he went to Villa. He's largely the same player. He's got better, but yeah. not so much 40 million better. Van Dijk didn't suddenly begin, Van Dijk was the same player at Celtic that he is at Liverpool now. I'm sure there's little bits of his game that are improved. Yeah. But he, you can see it was there. Tierney is the same player now at Arsenal. He was at Celtic. He was 25. So it's, uh, it's undervalued. Okay. Yeah. Well, there we Just go. Standing up for it. I think it should be worth a bit more. What does that say? I like it. <laughs> I don't like it. Ooh, I like it. Yeah. No, I'm saying I don't like the. Oh. You know. Mm. I didn't know what it sounded like. It's trying to rescue it. <laughs> All right, let's do uh, Tammy Abraham now, JJ, because the, lots of discussion about Tam Tammy Abraham. James McNicholas wrote in The Athletic uh, about a week ago that Arsenal did have interest, or do have interest, I'm not sure, in, in, in Abraham. Uh, but we've also heard uh, uh, through The Athletic and elsewhere that Chelsea would expect to be receiving bids for £40 million pounds or above if they were going to consider them. And I think the first thing, when we have Arsenal, Arsenal's board up here, because we can talk about him in relation to this team, but generally speaking, the first question that comes to my mind is like, not is he worth £40 million, because I think we can agree, based on his qualities, that he probably is, but who's going to pay £40 million for him yeah. at this moment in time? Who has £40 million spare? Not many clubs. No. I mean, the thing with Arsenal, so the, the link with Arsenal would be that I guess he's high potential, young player, um, scores goals, is decent at most things a striker does. His link-up play is probably a bit of his improvement. Right. Um, plays very much as a on-the-shoulder nine, like a Bamiang. But he can play in wide areas as well, in the channels. But what they've been doing in pre-season in Arsenal is playing the sort of 4-2-3-1, 4-2-2. So, so you've got front two, and then one, I mean, this doesn't work very well because they're both very similar stylistically. Yeah. One would drop. To give you this, so when you get into attacking positions, rather than having just, it's not that you have Nketiah as a winger like this, it's not how it works. But you get your width from Tierney coming up, and you get width from Chambers maybe? Oh, maybe not. But then one of them would drop to this position and it makes defenders, you know, you can, you just sure. give them a little bit of depth. It twists them out of position. It twists them a little bit, and then Nketiah can come into this position here and suddenly you've got three strikers and yeah. you've got width. Abraham for... 40 million when they've got Inketia they're trying to bring through and Florian Balogun's had a good pre-season, mm. could be their potential breakout star next season. It doesn't make a lot of sense financially, especially when they need to buy an entire midfield. When I watch um, Abraham play though, I sort of think, you know, there's a, there's a, there's a sort of, there's a stereotype about tall strikers that they are, you know, route one players or that they're, you need to cross the ball into heaven. Whereas the modern day player is very different to that. And Abraham it strikes me as one of those like 80% all rounders who's actually very good at things that 10 years ago you wouldn't have thought a player of his height would have been good at. But he's not amazing at some of those things. Do you know what I mean? Like it feels like yeah. he needs, he, he's teetering. He could have a breakthrough season. I wouldn't be surprised if, let's say, he did join Arsenal. If in a year or two he's, he put in a 25 goal season, like that could feasibly happen, right? Well, it's just a bit of a gamble. That's what he's like at younger level. He just scores so many, and I think yeah. he scored heaps at Swansea when he was there as well. Yeah. But the problem seems so you, to be. I mean, the 40 million, but you're, you're paying for that potential, whether or not it, it, it bears fruit. Yeah. I mean, if you, the thing is, he was really good at championship level at Swansea. He scored heaps. But in the Premier League, he doesn't score every chance that he gets and he doesn't engineer an awful lot of things himself he's kind of like reminds me of like Michael Owen back in the day or something and he, he's a finisher he's tall yeah he's tall but he plays like he's small yeah like he plays like a five foot eight player but he, I think he's a bit taller than that yeah a, a, like an advanced forward he gets in behind the last line good movement in the box um but he's not a complete striker I don't think you can play him as a just a one just now at a top level club because maybe he needs development so then where does he go if he went to somewhere like in Spain, say Villarreal or something like that. Playing a two, maybe that might suit him the best. Mm -hmm. um, but he plays a one Swansea, so maybe I'm talking nonsense. But he's certainly not. I mean, he's not trusted at Chelsea. It seems to be to be the main striker. Can't break in ahead of Timo Werner even. Maybe he just doesn't quite fit what Tuchel wants to do. Maybe, but then he's quite a fast, yeah, clever player in the final third. 
Isn't that kind of what you're looking for from that? Or Alex Stewart thinks he should go to Dortmund. Yeah. That'd be nice, wouldn't it? But then they sign Daniel Malin, who's basically a forward who's sure. not as good a finisher. That's the day, soldier boy! <laughs> it's the end! What are you going to do? We like Tammy Abraham. We also like JJ Bull. I've written a nice message for you there on the board. What does that say, JJ? It says, I like transfers. Well, what a lovely note to end the video on. Now, this is the last instalment of Transfer Rumours Analyzed. So, you know. Is it? It is the last one. Yeah. Well, it was nice. It was nice. But we'll be back again probably in the future when we assess how well you enjoyed it. Now, goodbye. That's the end now. If you like this video, please consider subscribing to the channel. And if you do enjoy TIFO, then you'll probably also like The Athletic. If you watch our tactics videos, you should go and read Michael Cox. If you're into data, read Tom Warville. And if you're into transfers, it's David Ornstein. Plus, if you're a fan of any Premier League team, then there's a journalist dedicated to you, and you can try it for free for 30 days now by clicking the link in the description.